Hi, I'm Megan Ryan with Making the Cut, and today we're going to make a canvas library tote bag. So we're going to start by using a canvas bag. I got these from Amazon. I've already pre-washed it and uh, pressed it so that I can get the wrinkles back out of it. Once you wash these things, they don't go completely flat again. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough to do sublimation. So what we're doing today is we're actually going to be making a sublimated image that's gonna go on this canvas bag. So if you've never done sublimation before, what it is, is the ink is actually fused to the fabric. So it doesn't fade, it doesn't tear off. Sometimes when you're doing vinyl, it'll start to peel on the corners. So this is actually fused, infused to the fabric. I use a Epson printer and it is the uh, Epson 2803 EcoTank. And when you get these, you wanna make sure first you do it a new one. If you start with one that's already had regular ink through it, it's gonna gunk it up and it's gonna be really hard to mess with. So start with a new printer, if at all possible, or clean out the other one really, really, really well. With the Inco tank, I just dump the sublimation ink into it and it's ready to go. All Epson printers are able to be converted into a sublimation printer. You can't do that with any printer, but Epson is already made so that it is doing a heat infused type of ink line. So it's wonderful for sublimation. You can pretty much use any of them. I like the Eco Tank because I can just dump it in there and it's ready to go instead of having to mess with cartridges and all that stuff. Um, with that, you'll also need to make sure you have sublimation paper. So I have uh, sublimation paper that I got on Amazon. The sublimation ink is from Amazon. The canvas tote bags are from Amazon. Amazon is just where I go to I can't normally find these things in store. So we're going to start in design space. So I'm gonna open up my design space here. And I've already chosen an image that I uploaded from Google. Um, I went back to try and find this image to give it credit and I could not find it anywhere. But this is not my own work. This is something that I found, I uploaded it, and I converted it to a print then cut. With print then cut, you can change it up to 6.75 inches wide and 9.25 inches long. Um, anything bigger than that, it won't print out. So I just go to make it. And this is the design, what it looks like. Make sure you mirror it. And then I'm gonna continue. send it to the printer and it's doing something weird there let me fix out of that and try it again send the printer and it's fixed okay I'm gonna turn off add bleed um, if I was going to have my Cricut cut this out afterwards then I would want that but I'm actually just gonna slice off the bad stuff since it's just straight edges all right so we're continuing and now I have my printed image. Okay, so this is the image once it is printed. You can tell that the, um, the colors are kind of faded. Sublimation ink does that. So it looks faded, but then when you press it, it becomes very vibrant. Because I'm doing this on canvas, it won't be as vibrant as if I was doing it on polyester or um, uh, Raylon, nylon synthetic blend, but it's still going to be better than this. So what I'm gonna do is, because it's print thin cut, it always does these black edges on the sides. I don't want that on my finished project. So I'm just going to use my paper slicer and I'm gonna slice these edges off. I could have my Cricut cut this out for me, but it would take more time to do that than if I just slice them. So we're just going to do a quick trim around the edges just to get that black line off. All right, so now I have my image 
and I'm going to need to use some heat transfer tape to put this where I want it. So I'm gonna center it here on my bag and then I'm gonna use my heat transfer tape Again, I got this on Amazon. And this is a tape that is designed for those high temperatures. I'm going to be uh, cooking this, pressing it at 400 degrees. So I wanna make sure that I have a tape that's gonna be able to handle that um, and not melt or tear up my machine. So I just do this and grab some scissors here. and line up my image. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, lint roller. This is a step I forget all the time, but it makes all the difference, especially when you have two dogs at your house. So use a lint roller and make sure there is no hair, fuzz, lint, nothing on there, because if there is, then the ink's gonna transfer to that instead of to your canvas. So I wanna make sure that I get all of that first. Now I'm ready. So I'm gonna put that on. I am not a perfectionist. I just kind of eyeball it. I'm sure it'll be a little crooked, but you know what? It's for me, so I don't mind it being a little crooked. Okay, now I'm just putting a little bit of tape at the bottom. I'm gonna put a little tape at the top. And that's just gonna hold it in place because inevitably when I pick this up, it's going to go up a little bit and it's not going to be as tight as it was before. So this allows it to stay where it's supposed to be and not cause any issues. So the reason we mirrored the image is because our image is upside down. So I want to make sure that I clipped the mirror before I printed it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my heat press. 400 degrees and I'm going to put a piece of paper inside just to make sure that this doesn't bleed through on the other side. So you want to always put something in your bag or whatever you're making anytime that you're doing an image like this. Okay, then I'm just going to stick it on here. it's still straight and now that I see it on here I can tell that it is really crooked so I'm gonna just pick it back up and try again. I didn't want it that crooked. All right so I've got it on there. I'm going to slide it back in, press it down and set it. So I'm doing 400 degrees for 30 seconds. So while that's going, my next video, I'm going to be doing a wood burning um, craft where I actually found these beautiful wood planks at a, um, it's like a, not a consignment store, um, like an antique shop. And there is a little booth in the back left-hand side that they're actually selling natural wood planks that still have the bark and rustic edges on them. And I fell in love with it. So I'm gonna be doing a wood burning exercise with that to um, make a really cool sign that I'm super excited about. So look forward to that in our next video. Okay, so now that I have this done, I'm going to just lift it up and so you can tell the ink has transferred off of it. I'm just gonna put that over there. And here is my library tote bag. So I just think that is so fun. We go to the library a lot, especially during the summer months, and it is always good to have a bag. I don't know how many times we have come out of the library with stacks of books and we've needed one of these. So that is my sublimated library tote bag. So I'll see y'all next time. Bye.